Hey guys, the lovely folks at Topaz Labs have just released a new app called Photo AI. And what it does is it kind of amalgamates three of their existing products or the basics of those products into one. So Photo AI does AI based denoising, it does AI based sharpening, and it does AI based enhancement and enlargement. And they were kind enough to give the software away free to anyone who had purchased the three individual products, the Topaz Denoise, Sharpen and Geiger Pixel, which was me. So I got a uh, Photo AI for free, I've downloaded it and I've been testing it and I just wanted to showcase it to you guys, show what it's capable of. And it occurred to me while I was testing this software that it would appeal to somebody who doesn't give a shit about the technicalities of photo improvement. They just want a very simple process wang the photo into the software, let it do its thing, press save and be done with it. I understand that not everybody wants to get completely granular into the nitty gritty of the software. Not everyone's a geek like me um, and enjoys that kind of stuff. I love it. I love getting right into the, the uh, depths of these uh, various software packages, but it's not everyone's thing. I understand that. So I picked out uh, four shots to kind of show you what it can do. So. Let's get in a Lightroom and have a look at it. All right guys, so here's the four photos I've picked out. This one is a raw photo, the .dng extension, which is a drone shot. Then we've got this bomb shot a daytime shot, which I took in Jervis Bay. We'll see what the software can do with that. We've got a nighttime shot I took quite recently with my Fujifilm X-T4. And finally, we've got this aerial shot, which I took with my drone. So let's run them through the software. So the first thing to say is that Photo AI, when you first install it, it will install as an extension in Lightroom. So you can send your photos to it if you use Lightroom to manage your photos. It does work with other software too, but we've got this option here, process with Photo AI. So we're going to click that and we'll edit a copy. Oh no, let's edit the original because it's a raw file. Okay, so it's opening up and as you can see, it says it's preparing raw model and removing noise down here. Now, as I say, this is an AI application. So if you want somebody else to do the hard work for you, this is the kind of software you want to be using. And we've got this thing, they call it autopilot, where it does some kind of analysis of the image and decides based on machine learning. Uh, they taught it all about photos back at Topaz Labs headquarters. And it makes an assessment and decides for you what it thinks should happen to the photo. And here we can say we say we're using raw image data, which is absolutely correct. There's no subject detected, which is fair enough. It's a very broad thing. There's no specific thing in there, like a person or a boat or something. Uh, and it's saying that the only thing it recommends to do to this is remove the raw noise. So let's see what strength it went for. A very tepid eight, actually. So this is what it looks like. What we can do is Flip up the old bar and zoom in and see what it's doing. Preview's updating. Let's go in even further, actually. Let's go to 400% so we can see properly what's happening. And as you can see, it's done a pretty sensational job of cleaning up all of that high ISO color noise that you get quite often in drone photos, particularly in low light scenarios. And DJI drones are getting really bloody good these days, but all cameras do this when they're in low light environments, they have to crank the ISO up and you get this noise. And as you can see, it has completely cleaned that out. It's done an absolutely bloody sensational job. We've still got all these waves as I'd expect them to be. So I give that a big thumbs up actually. I think that's done a sensational job. All right guys, here is shot number two, a bomb shot I took down at Jervis Bay. Very lovely place it is too. Check out that turquoise water. Absolutely stunning. And also, can you see the dude flying the drone there in the shop? Anyway, let's see how this goes in Topaz. I mean, you might look at that and think, doesn't really need anything doing to it. But 
I beg to differ. So as before, it's analyzing it. It's saying it's removing high luminance noise. So if we turn that off for a second and just go to the result, so we can see what this image looks like before and after. Here is the before and here is the after. Pretty subtle changes going on there, I'm sure you'll agree. But the reason I chose this was I thought that these rocks were a little bit kind of mushy and could deal with some sharpening. And I wondered how it would handle it. So let's put that back into results mode and we'll turn on this sharpen option. We'll see how it does with motion blur because it is a drone and it was moving obviously in the air and there's the before and after so let's put that on the split screen so we can see what's going on and i think that is a huge improvement really nice crisp edges around all those rocks now let's see how it's done with the waves so there's the waves before waves after again it's done a really nice job look how crisp it is down in this lower portion down here i'll zoom in a bit and we'll have a better look at it it's going at 200 have a look at these waves before quite blurry but after and all nice and crisp there is what the finished thing looks like it's the sort of thing i would definitely run over my photos all right let's move on to our third shot all right guys here's shot three obviously a night shot the problem is of course when you're taking night sky shots you get a lot of noise because as you can see we're at ISO 5000 up here to really try and crank it the fuji xt4 does a sensational job of keeping the noise levels lower really high ISOs but no cameras perfect and you do get noise and you can see it all in here and the difficulty with this is for the software to decide what's a star and what's noise let's put this into uh, photo AI removing noise it says there's a subject detected hmm what could that be do you think it's decided the subjects in the Milky Way or the house I'm gonna say it's suggesting the house is the subject and we can find out see over here in the autopilot if you hover over subject it will show you what it's decided the subject it's decided that the house is that's kind of fair enough i guess it's not to know that actually i'm more interested in the night sky here but that's fine uh, and you can refine that if you want using these sensitivity bars just to increase the size of the mask and encapsulate more of the image uh, it's not quite as clever as the individual topaz labs denoise ai masking is but it's pretty damn good for an all-in-one let's leave it saying that the subject is the house and what noise has it gone for 56 it's saying the noise is strong which is fine it is iso 5000 let's have a look let's go up and see how it's done on the milky way here's what it's like before and here's after and as you can see it's scrubbed out a huge amount of that high iso noise look in these gray clouds here as i roll over them that's before and that's after they're all gone it's done a great job of retaining all the stars nothing's been removed on that level so thumbs up on this it's done a pretty good job so if you're shooting night sky photos then potentially an extremely useful software application for you all right let's go on to our fourth and final image it's saying it's removing high luminance noise it's a daytime shot there should be very little noise as it is but it's interesting to see what changes the software might make all right so let's decide that uh, we don't want to run denoising on this image because it never needed it in the first place but we might like to sharpen it up i want to show you a little gotcha with this software which i discovered the other day if i click on the sharpen tab then the ai is still going to operate okay it's going to decide what needs sharpening and if you look down the bottom there it's got this thing subject only and the box is ticked which is all well and good but what has it decided is the subject what is the only thing that it's going to apply its sharpening code to let's have a look it's like the the track if we zoom out you can see fully what it's picked and it's decided that basically that small portion of the image is what needs sharpening so in this case, you'd probably want to turn the subject only sharpening off and let it do its thing. All right, it's finished sharpening. Let's see if we can see if anything of substance has changed as we swipe backwards and forwards for the before and after. After on the right, of course, and before on the left. So it looks like it's crisped up the houses a little bit. 
and also the edge of the trees there on the mountain. Let's have a look. If we zoom in on these folks down here, got these members of the public, arms folded, judging somebody flying a drone. What are the chances? Let's have a look. So that's before from on the left. And if we swipe over, you can see, actually, that's done a really nice job, just crisping up nicely. So we've seen a couple of these options here going. Recover faces, as obviously if you're shooting portrait photography, which I don't do. I'm not a portrait photographer, let's do landscapes and stuff like that. We've also got this enhanced resolution here, and this is primarily used when you want to make a small image much bigger without the issues you get with resizing and something like Photoshop using a non-AI based model. It kind of invents pixels, that's the problem. So we've talked about some of these sliders already, the remove noise there and the uh, sharpen. Uh, we've got the recover faces there, which is obviously used for portrait photography, not something I'm overly concerned with. I'm not a portrait photographer, I don't really take photos of people. But we've got this enhanced resolution option down here as well. And this is for upscaling small images using AI, but you can use the enhanced resolution even if you keep this upscale at 1x, and Topaz Labs tell me it will still do some enhancements in the image. In a similar way to the enhance option in Lightroom. So let's firstly zoom out, enhance resolution, and we'll keep it at 1x, and we're gonna tick it over to natural. This is not low resolution, it's not graphics, it's just a landscape. So let's give the software a fighting chance. I have turned off sharpen because we just want to see the images, uh, the effect of this enhanced resolution on the image without any of the sharpening stuff applied to see what we can see what it's doing. That's quite nice actually. In fact, I would argue that it's done a slightly better job for this photo in terms of sharpening than the actual sharpen option did. <laughs> before, after, before, after. So yes, it's, sharpened the edges using this enhanced resolution option. What's it done to these foldy arm man? Yeah, that's really nice. That's interesting actually. So there you go, there's a top tip for you. If you've got a daytime photo and you just want to crisp it up, I'd argue that the enhanced resolution with the upscale set to one does a more sensitive, sensible job of sharpening the image than the sharpen tool does. Because the sharpen tool is geared up for big jobs, you know, high ISO, all that kind of stuff. So there you go, guys. That's Topaz Labs Photo AI, which is a compellingly priced application, which gives you all the power of the Photo AI software that Topaz Labs have been developing for several years now. Is this combined package bringing all these different elements of Topaz Labs software together as powerful as the individual apps? No, and I think there'd be a small riot if there had been because, you know, people like me who bought the software and say, what the hell? You know, we paid, you know, quite a bit of money for these three individual applications and now you've jammed them all together and are selling them for less than the price of one of those applications. So what gives Topaz Labs? Uh, but they haven't done that. They have stripped out some of the more advanced features from the individual apps, the advanced masking from uh, things like the Denoise and Sharpen. But what is in there is excellent, and it's more than enough, I suspect, for most people. So if you don't want that kind of denoising and sharpening stuff built into your software application that you use, whatever editor you use, whether it's Affinity Photo or whatever, then there's a strong argument for buying this, and it works brilliantly on drone photos, it works great on uh, standard landscape shots taken on like a mirrorless or a DSLR. It's a great little bit of kit, very simple. The AI made sensible suggestions as to how to enhance things. It didn't go crazy. Uh, it didn't really miss a beat on any of the photographs that I've tested it on. And I reckon it's a great little bit of software. And if you're looking for something like that, I'll give it a thumbs up. All right, guys, that'll do for this little walkthrough on uh, Topaz Labs. Photo AI. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the old like button down there at the bottom of your screen. And if you like this content and want to see more of this kind of stuff, then please subscribe to my channel. Till the next time, guys. Ta ta.